Alright guys, it's time for another day. Today is going to be a chess day and we actually received quite some ATX equipment as an addition to our gym, which we will be uh, constructing today. Already did some yesterday as well. So that's pretty awesome to make the gym even more complete. I'll show you that later. But for now, it's time for the breakfast after already having done 20 minutes of cardio. All right, so this is the breakfast you are all familiar with. As you can see, we have, of course, some cream of rice mixed with a little bit of oatmeal, which I had left over. This cream of rice is not from a package, it's actually made by myself with a blender, just using jasmine rice or basmati rice, doesn't really matter. Blend it up and then cook it like that until it has a consistency of your regular cream of rice. So that's very possible. If you want to see how that is done, check out my last lag video where I explain how I'm going to do that. But I'll also make a separate video regarding this as well. We also put 60 grams of white isolate in here. And on top you of course see the beautiful, delicious Calabout chocolate. Dark chocolate of course, maintaining the maximum amount of phytonutrients. And we also have some red fruit throughout here, some Himalayan pink salt. And uh, unfortunately we're out of cinnamon, so gotta get some new. And we also have of course the kiwi. Very good for protein digestion and healthy fibers, vitamin C. So let's enjoy this and see you at the next one. We need to choose a color for our master rooms because our art has lots of grays in it. So I'm thinking this one. All right, we're in the kitchen right now, preparing some vegetables as you can see in this oven. We actually went to the grocery store just now and I got a lot of these vegetable bags, those fresh vegetables, who are going to be um, expiring today. So I'm putting them all in the oven, so they will last a bit longer in the fridge. The same goes for this pumpkin right here. Let's see, uh, I can go a few minutes longer, three minutes. And what we also have is some rice Right in here, 400 grams with the turmeric, not powder, but actually turmeric root. So let's check that out as well. Alrighty, this is the result of the rice. This is going to be the meal I'm eating right now. 250 grams of cooked rice. This bigger Tupperware is actually 325 grams, I believe, for the pre uh, post-workout. This is a 250 grams again. This uh, two, 325, another post workout for tomorrow. This is the pumpkin I showed you, nice and crispy pumpkin already prepared. And this is the vegetable. So preparation, trust me guys, is half of the work. It's a Dutch phrase, but it's true. When this is all done, all you have to do is combine all the things and cook the protein fresh or also uh, prepare the protein and prep it, which I do. So let me show you what this meal will transform to. Yeah, so this is what the pre-workout meal looks like. What we have is some avocado, as you can see. We have the rice I showed you earlier. We have the vegetables I showed you earlier as well. Just to, uh, put a bit of pumpkin and the vegetable mix in there. Very delicious. The protein source is sous vide tuna. So it might not look very good, but it tastes very amazing. As you can see, it flakes apart already. Normally cooks with sous vide, cook a fish or a meat or chicken or whatever, and then very quickly stir it off in the pan so the outside actually looks good and the uh, effect, the caramelization uh, happened. But that's not what we do as bodybuilders because you need fat to add. And the fat I have here is the avocado and it tastes amazing anyway. So let's enjoy this one. All right, guys, so now it's time for the workout. We ate the pre-workout meal about two hours before starting the workout. That's what I like. So here I am doing the first exercise, and it is a new one. The ATX lever or lever, whatever you want to call it, chest press. And you can use these lever arms for several movements, like an incline or flat or a decline chest press depending on how you put the bench obviously but also rowing movements or shoulder presses so we got this as an addition to the gym because we have a very large um, cage inside the weightlifting rack 
to which you can attach a lot of things like these lever arms. So I'm using it for a chest press because well, we do have a chest press in the gym, but not one where you can use this specific angle. And you know, as I always say, hitting the muscle from as many angles as possible is the best way for overall development of the entire muscle that you're training. So this is a great first movement because we can attach a lot of plates to this movement. As you can see, I also got some new ATX uh, power lifting plates calibrated to be exactly the weighted states and they are very thin which uh, provides me the opportunity to load up this pin with a lot of weight and any other exercise as well because normally we use bumper plates which are literally four to five times as wide but now we have the thinnest possible plates which weigh quite heavy for sure so as always i'm showing you the working sets in videos like this where i also show my meals i like to show only the working sets otherwise you would also see all the warm-ups it would take quite long but every single warm-up that might be interesting i will show such as this one i thought i wasn't able to use this weight as a warm-up but a, rather a working set but sometimes you feel if you did five reps with a war with a heavy weight and you can still feel like oh i can do a, at least 15 reps like this and then you simply stop and wait a little bit and then pick a heavier weight like this one as this is my first working set so this is a second movement an incline dumbbell press and you know always control the weight on the way down get a nice stretch in the chest and then explode on the way up without locking out the elbows because if you do the tension will be shifted from the chest to the elbow joint and then the tension is not where you want it because you want it on the muscle and not the bone and because i actually hit more than 12 reps which is my maximum amount of weight uh, I mean reps I want to hit with my first working set because I hit more than 12 the next working set is actually a heavier set even because then I get below 12 in between 8 and 12 is where I like to hit my heaviest set for most uh, exercises especially exercises that are a bit more riskful like chest movements you don't want to mess up the front delts you don't want to mess up the joints or the triceps you only want to hit the chest which this weight is perfect for so this is the other chest press i was talking about and this one is more easy to actually squeeze a chest with and the other one is better for overall weight on the bar and more mechanical tension so this one is a hammer grip or a neutral grip whatever you want to call it and it allows me to squeeze the chest a bit more plus it is a different grip compared to the first chest press making it just a bit more different hitting the chest just a bit uh, in a different way allowing for other muscle fibers to be targeted uh, to be emphasized differently for a more complete development of the chest but i really love this one for squeezing the chest and you can also get a very nice stretch which you'd always get but the squeeze here is phenomenal all right, so this one is again the 1025 technique, which I got from John Meadows. So if you don't follow that guy, he's a great ambassador for the sport, in my opinion, a great coach, very smart individual, achieved uh, bodybuilding prestige as well. So make sure to go to his channel. I believe it's either John Meadows or Mountain Dog, one of the two. But anyway, the 1025 technique is you hit the weight with 10 reps until failure but then because you still want to hit 15 reps every rep after that will be very difficult because it's called a 10 25 technique because you hit 25 reps with a weight you can only do 10 reps with normally so how do you ever hit those 25 reps it's by taking very small breaks in between every rep whenever you hit failure after those 10 reps so as you can see here i can do maximum one two maybe three reps every time then i hit failure i rest for three to four seconds i go again until i hit 25 reps in total so it's a great way to hit 
more of the hard reps because the hard reps are the reps that makes you grow. It's not the reps, all the reps before, all the warm up reps, they don't count in making the muscle grow. It's only those last reps where it's very difficult to complete the full range of motion. Alrighty, the next one is the ATX belt squat machine, but we're not doing squats obviously, we are doing dips with a belt, and I'm only doing one true working set, but again adding an intensifying technique, which will be a drop set, so first I warm up with my body weight, that's just one warm up to get used to the movement, then I hit an extra 10 kilos, and then I am already at failure uh, at around 7 reps, and then I remove the 10 kilos and do as many reps again until hitting failure. Really focusing on the stretch and not so much on the contraction because we already got an incredible pump from the previous movements. And the next movement is for the triceps and it simply is one of my favorites, the rope tricep pushdown. It's a simple one, a straight uh, forward, but it is a great one to hit those striation contractions in the triceps, as you can see right there. And to me, that's why a lean bulk is something you always want to do and not just a dirty bulk, at least if you already have some amount of muscle mass to show, because then you can actually visually see whether you're contracting the muscle fully or not. And I've always had that with the biceps, with the triceps, with the chest. Seeing those striations really helps also with the mind-muscle connection, knowing what the muscle should look like in a fully contracted state. But anyway, I like to start with a rope tricep extension, pretty much always, or a straight bar extension, as long as it's an isolation movement like this on the cable machine for the triceps, to warm them up even more. Even after having done all those chest movements, I still like to warm them up even more. And now I'm even longing them as well, making sure that I hit more reps and more weight every single time that I try them out. And of course, after the chest and the triceps were pumped, you gotta see what you look like with the pump. But after having done two working sets with a rope tricep extension downwards, we are now doing it overhead. And we're not just doing one working set, not just two, but we are doing three working sets here. So hitting five total working sets for the triceps, which means five sets going to failure for the triceps, because normally you might want to hit three movements for the triceps and uh, do one or two working sets each, but here I'm doing only two, so I'm doing an extra working set on this overhead rope tricep extension, and it's a really nice one. So because I'm doing three working sets, the first two are the same weight, aiming to hit the same amount of reps each time, and the third one with, will be with a bit lighter weight, hitting a few more reps, hitting two slightly different rep ranges, which targets a slightly different muscle fibers in slightly different ways, which is what bodybuilding is all about. It's not about changing things up super much, it's all about emphasizing things little by little, and uh, but sticking to the basics, of course. And why am I only doing these two tries of movements? It's because these two really feel amazing. I get a great mind-muscle connection, I get a great stretch and a great contraction without any elbow pain at all. So those are three factors that a bodybuilder wants. You wanna get a good pump in there, you want to get great mind-muscle connection, you actually want to feel the contraction, you want to feel the stretch, and you don't want to feel pain in any other area of the body instead of the muscle itself, which is actually called good pain. So this is the final working set, really going to failure, making sure I hit all the reps until hitting true failure, and failure to me is whenever I can't finish a rep completely using good form. Alrighty, just got done with the chest workout. It was quite a nice workout. Just filmed the working sets, and this is the pose workout meal right here. So I added some vegetables here, just 100 grams of asparagus, spears, 
We have about 100 grams of tuna with the rice I showed you earlier. This is 325 grams of cooked rice. And we also have some sockeye salmon, which is a beautiful uh, protein source, a very low fat. And the only fat that's in there is omega-3s. We have a kiwi. And right there we have a bagel on which I will put the sockeye salmon. So also some salt right there, which is almost run out. So I need to refill. Plenty of water. Let's enjoy this, guys. Okay, guys, just got home wearing my blue light blocking glasses because it's getting late now. And you want the blue light block. So block of the blue light from, for example, this device right here, my camera, my, uh, my phone, my TV, stuff like this. Every blue light emission you get after it's dark outside will limit the amount of melatonin you produce, which limits the quality of sleep. So make sure to block the blue light. Anyway, this is the meal I'm eating right now. Just uh, very similar to what you saw before. The pumpkin, the vegetable mix, and the tuna and the rice. Uh, 250 grams of rice, 300 grams of tuna, 10 milliliters of almond oil actually. And I'll be having avocado oil tomorrow again with almond oil is a pretty good alternative as well. And I'll be adding salt to taste. So let's enjoy. Alrighty guys, last meal of the day. This is the protein source, 300 grams of salmon, steak or fillet, whatever you want to call it, or filet. Here we have some uh, cauliflower with some Himalayan pink salt on there. So the vegetables, proteins and fats are taken care of. And this is the carb source. This actually is teff flour combined with, wait for it, rice flour whole grain. So as you can see, about 360 calories, 80 grams of carbs in the rice flour, and a little bit less here, so 65 grams of carbs uh, in the teff flour and 334 calories in here. So comparable, but still a bit different, but I just like to experiment with different carb sources. The Teff flour is actually a low FODMAP, um, digests really well, very low fiber, and it's gluten-free. So for people who want to change up their carb source instead of an oatmeal to get a gluten-free variant, that's a good way to go. Also put in some psyllium husk, and we have 30 grams of dark chocolate from Calabout very dark chocolate just like in the morning and some raspberries so also some pineapple actually which i'm not showing right now it's actually uh, at my computer where i'm gonna eat just in a minute also work on nutrition plans cogents and some emails but anyway guys this was the video of the day don't forget to check out the clothing on vintagegenetics.com everything i was wearing today is available there and again thank you for watching and don't forget to stay golden.